Alright, so in this video we're going to be talking about differentiation and in particular the differentiation rules for power rule, sum rule, difference rule, and constant multiple rule. Um, I'm already assuming that watching this video you have a general sense of how to do power rule and then of course sum rule and difference rule just simply means that if you have multiple terms that are added or subtracted to each other you take the derivatives of those individual terms and add or subtract them to each other. Not much of a big deal there. Where there tends to be a little bit of confusion is what to do when you have something like this in my example B here where you have x in the denominator of a rational expression or x cubed in the denominator of a rational expression. So we'll talk about how we can rewrite these and how we can then apply power rule to be able to find our derivatives. So let's go ahead and make sure we're on the same page by doing a. So for a, we're given 5x cubed plus 6x squared minus 3x plus 2. And we're calling this our function, our f of x. Now when we find our first derivative, we would use power rule and we would also use sum rule, meaning we're going to find the derivative of each of these individual terms, the 5x cubed, the 6x squared, the negative 3x, and the 2, and then put them all together in addition or subtraction form to have our final derivative. So for 5x cubed, that means that we're going to take this 3, which is our exponent, multiply it to the 5, which gives us 15. We have our x still, and we're going to drop this exponent by 1. So we think 3 minus 1, which gives us 2. So we have 15x squared for that first term. For the second term, it's a positive 6. And I have an exponent of 2, so I have 2 times positive 6, which gives me a positive or a plus 12. There's my x there. And I'm going to subtract this by 1, so I'm going to go from 2 to 1, which means I just simply have an x, so I'm done there. With this negative 3x, so it's as if you have a 1 here. You don't necessarily see it, but that's your exponent is a 1. So with that exponent of 1, we'd have 1 times negative 3, which gives us negative 3, or minus 3. We subtract 1 from that, and we end up with 1 minus 1, which gives us 0. So then we just simply have minus 3. Now for this plus 2 term, because it doesn't have a variable connected to it, in fact, if you were to graph just simply y equals 2, it's a flat line, we say that it has a slope of 0. So we don't even include this plus 2, but I'll just simply write it here in blue so you can note it, that for that last term, that plus 2 term, we say that it has a slope, a derivative of 0, and then we're done. So we'd say that our final first derivative, or f prime, is going to be 15x squared plus 12x there go, minus 3. And we're done. That's it. And that takes care of part A. Now when you get to part B, you have 7x minus 4 divided by x plus 3 over x cubed. Now before I go in and take the derivative of this function, I'm going to do some rewriting. This is a little something I like to call uh, dihydrogen monoxide. It's a dihydrogen monoxide rule. And it's the idea that you have something that looks really complicated. And if you've seen power rule, or not product power rule, but product rule or quotient rule or chain rule, you might be thinking, oh my goodness, I have to know how to do that particular type of rule in order to solve this. Actually, you don't. When I say dihydrogen monoxide, for those of you who've taken chemistry, you know that dihydrogen monoxide is just simply two hydrogen and an oxygen, which means I'm simply saying water. So in essence, what you're looking at looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. So let's break it down so that it doesn't look so complicated and so fearsome. So we know that the 7x is going to be exactly the same, so we'll just say 7x. But anytime you have a variable in your denominator like this, 
you can essentially treat this as a negative exponent, meaning when you have divide by something, you're saying make an exponent and put a negative in front of that exponent. So don't say, for example, negative x. That's not what we're talking about. This negative needs to go in front of the exponent. So it needs to go up here. So it actually needs to go up here. Okay. So let's try it with this one that we're given. We have minus 4 over x. There's essentially an invisible little 1 here, just like we saw in that previous problem. There was a 1 that was right there. Okay, so when we have 4 divided by x to the first power, what you're really saying is 4 times, there's that 1, we put a negative in front of that exponent to show that it would hang out in the denominator if you were to rewrite it in this form. So you're really looking at minus 4x to the negative 1. That is not so bad. We can do the same thing with this third term where it's plus 3 over x cubed. So we would write plus 3. We have our x. I'm going to put that cubed there, but again, it's in the denominator. So when I'm in the denominator, that means my exponent is negative. So I'm really looking at 3x to the negative 3. And from here, we can actually use power rule to take our first derivative. So I'll put a little note here that if we have um, 1 over, or something, I'll say it like that, something over x to the n, and n could be any type of number, the way we can rewrite that into to say straight multiplied exponent form is we would have whatever our number or value is from the numerator, and we multiply that by x to the negative n, where the n is just matching that exponent we had from when we were in the denominator, and that negative is telling us that this term, this x to the n, x to the n, lives in the denominator. So that's what that negative does for us. So let's go ahead and take the first derivative of this. So I have f prime of x, I'm going to simply go through and use my power rule. So first term is 7x. So that means I'm thinking 7x essentially to the first power. So I have 1 times 7, which gives me 7. And then because this x is to the first power, I have to drop it by 1. So it's x to the zeroth power. So it's essentially just 1. So I have just 7 left behind. With this next one, I have minus 4x to the negative 1. Power rule still works here. As long as you don't have 0 as your exponent when you're starting off, you can do this. So I have negative 1 as my exponent, and I have negative 4 essentially as my coefficient. So I do negative 4 times negative, or negative 1, sorry, times negative 4. It gives me positive 4. There's my x. I drop this exponent by 1. So don't think negative 1 plus 1, but negative 1 minus 1. So negative 1 minus 1, okay? Which, if you look, becomes just simply a negative 2. So I'm going to replace that negative 1 minus 1 with a negative 2. So I've dropped it by 1. Then I do the same thing with this last term, this 3x to the negative 3. So I take the negative 3, my exponent, I multiply it to the positive 3. That gives me a negative or a minus 9. There's my x. Then with this negative 3, I minus 1. I drop it by 1. So negative 3 minus 1 gives me negative 4. So our final answer for our first derivative for this original function of 7x minus 4 over x plus x over 3 over x cubed is right here. So we say that it's 7 plus 4x to the negative 2 minus 9x to the negative 4th. If you wanted to rewrite this so it went back to this rational expression form, you could do that if you wanted to. We would just simply say that we have the 7, that's as is. We have a 4. Notice that the 4 is not connected with the x, so it's not parentheses for x. The 4 is separate. So I'd have the 4 in my numerator. And then this is telling me that I should have 
x squared in my denominator because there's my two negative means I have a denominator. Then for this next one, I have minus 9x to the negative fourth. So that means I'm going to have minus 9. This fraction bar is because of that negative exponent it's telling me that this x to the fourth is going to be in my denominator. So there it is, x to the fourth. So just that simple, simply, we were able to use power rule to be able to work with rational expressions. In the next video, we're going to continue this application of just our basic rules, sum and difference, constant multiple, and power rule to be able to handle things like square roots and other sets of functions where we have items multiplied together. So come on back and stay tuned.